Greetings fellow AoE enthusiast, welcome to the first custom civilization concept on this channel. This time we will look at the Gales. To understand how to design a civilization in Age of Empires 2, we need to look at the two different approaches. The first one is a bonus tech or unit design you have in mind that you can center the civilization concept around. With this approach, the civilization name is not as relevant as the bonuses. The second approach is, you have a specific civilization name in mind and the bonuses are not as important as the civilization itself. The bonuses are added after you have decided what fits the general theme of your specific civilization. For this video, I used the first approach because I wanted to create a unique infantry unit that is wielding a two-handed axe and is also useful in Castle Age. Before we continue with the details though, we should discuss the civilization icon, the architecture style and the wonder, so we have the basics out of the way. If you want to skip to a specific section in the video, just use the chapters function or the timestamps in the description. The most logical choice for the icon would be the three crowns of the Lordship of Ireland that was used between 1171 and 1541. However, this can be confused with the Franks icon, so maybe a more fitting icon would be the golden harp on a green field that was used after in the 16th century. It is maybe not as historically accurate, but it is better distinguishable. The architecture and the in-game dialogue would be the Western European architecture, or in other words, the exact same as the Celts. The wonder would be either the Bunratty Castle that was built in the 15th century or the Christchurch Cathedral in Dublin that was founded in the 11th century under a Viking king. But how did I end up with the Gales anyway? As I said, I wanted to design a unique unit that is wielding a two-handed axe. Especially the Dane axes from the Vikings were something I had in mind. I then did a bit of research and came across the medieval Irish or Gaels that were under heavy influence from the Vikings after the raids that started in the 8th century. And although the Irish are theoretically already in the game under the umbrella term of the Celts, I, as a big Vikings nerd, was instantly hooked. I was a bit hesitant in the beginning though because of the overlap, but since we now have so many steppe civilizations that are all very similar to each other, I decided to give this one a pass. The Celts are also designed to represent the medieval Scottish, but historically the Celts were basically everywhere and their bonuses are not inherently influenced by the Vikings. And this was something I really wanted to base the Gales around. I wanted to design them to be a very Viking influenced Civ and we will talk about the Civ bonuses later, so you will see how they were partly inspired by them. Back to the unique unit, I found out that the medieval Irish used the so-called Gallo Glass as a heavy infantry unit that also utilized the Viking Dane Axe. In fact, the Gallo Glass were very often Norse mercenaries that fought for the paying Irish lords and later on also in other countries in Europe, such as the Netherlands or the Swiss Guard. Interestingly, the Gaels usually fought without armor and they had pretty quick infantry units called the Kern. Most of the time they relied on fast surprise tactics to defeat their enemies, but I think the Kern is a unit that is very well represented by the Celt Road Raider. After the Viking invasions, the Gaels adapted to the strong armor of the Vikings and they either hired them or trained themselves to become a Galloglass. The Galloglass was described as a heavily armored infantry that could be used in straight up pitch battles and because they proved to be more effective than the lightly armored Kerns, they soon became the main infantry unit of the medieval Irish. With that in mind, I started designing a unit concept that could be used as a strong main unit in the game. I was thinking about how the Spanish, Burmese and Turks could rely on very strong unique unit pushes to weaken their enemies in Castle Age. I was wondering if it was possible to achieve a similar playstyle with a melee infantry unit. The similarities of the mentioned unique units are that they do cost a fair bit of resources and they are quite squishy, but they do deal significantly higher damage than generic Castle Age units. 
to test how this would work with an infantry unit, I had to decide on what unit I wanted to use to represent the Gallo glass, because I couldn't add a custom one myself. The only unit that comes close to a two-handed axe wielder is the Frankish throwing axeman, so I use them as my test object. The problem with the throwing axeman though is, they have a ranged attack. However, I was able to fix this in the scenario editor. I created a few new triggers to change the stats of the throwing axeman to that of a gallo glass. The first thing was, I removed the ranged attack of the throwing axeman. Then I changed the attack from 7 to 13, because the gallo glass needs to deal significantly more damage than a generic castle age unit. I was thinking the gallo glass could be a castle age almost champion, with only a few drawbacks to stay balanced. The next step I took was changing the base armor to 2 melee and 1 pierce. To balance this rather high melee armor for a castle age infantry unit out, I reduced the HP to 50. This way the Gallo glass can withstand more melee damage than a longswordsman and has the same armor as a knight, but they are not as durable with the low health pool. Therefore they are quite vulnerable against archers or siege weapons. I then fixed the reload times, the walking speed and the line of sight to match the longswordsman. You might think this is already a pretty cool unique unit, but I haven't told you about the utility yet. The Gallo glass is carrying a two-handed axe and therefore it is able to individually cut down trees one by one. Quite similar to the Khmer Ballista Elephant, but because they are going to be a lot cheaper than a Ballista Elephant, they need some time to cut them down. About 3 seconds per tree. You can see here how the theory behind it would look like and how fast a Gallo glass would chop trees. Now, because the Gallo glass is such a strong unit, it has to be more expensive than a generic castle aid unit, but not as expensive as the Conquistador or Arambai, because they also provide a lot of mobility. I ended up with a price of 55 food and 35 gold, which is still in the range of the more expensive infantry unique units. This way we have a very powerful unit, but it is still far away from a one unit kills all concept. For the elite version, the Gallo glass still had to be viable in the Imperial Age, because the Gales started to use them a lot as their military. I looked at other infantry unique units and how their stats improved after the elite upgrade and I saw that they were quite diverse. Usually the upgrade improved the armor, attack and health, but the upgrade cost was quite different. When we look at the World Raider, we can see that they gained 15 HP and 5 attack for 1800 total resources. The Shotel Warrior on the other hand only gains 10 HP and 2 attack while having a similar cost of 1750 total resources. The most expensive infantry elite upgrade is the Berserk with 1850 total resources and an improvement of 14 HP, 5 attack and 2 melee armor. So in a similar fashion, I increased the base attack of the Gallo glass by 2 from 13 to 15, the base armor by 2 from 2 to 3 melee and 1 to 2 pierce, and I also increased the base HP by 15 from 50 to 65. Because these are a lot of improvements similar to the Viking Berserk, the upgrade needs to be expensive as well. I decided for a total cost of 1950 resources, consisting of 1200 food and 750 gold. This way the Gallo glass upgrade is the most expensive unique infantry upgrade. Keep in mind though that these numbers could be tweaked, since the upgrade is doing about as much as the Elite Berserk upgrade, with the Gallo glass being a bit more expensive. I then did a lot of testing against other units and was quite happy with the result. Now with the unique unit done, we can look at the unique technologies for the Gales. But first, we need a blank civilization that we can change to the Gales. The most suitable civ I found was the Indians, because their bonuses can be easily addressed and it was quite easy to change the tech tree as well. I then also switched the architecture to the Western European style. The only thing that is missing now is the in-game dialogue, which should sound like the Celts. 
With that out of the way now, I had a lot of ideas for the unique tags because I wanted them to be Viking inspired. The first tag I had in mind was called Ancestors and it would increase the HP of barracks units. But because that was too close to the Vikings bonus, I scrapped it pretty quickly. I then looked up how the medieval Irish fought and I came across the Hobolar, which is a light cavalry unit that they also used a lot in their warfare. At first I was thinking about creating a second unique unit in the stable for them, but then I decided to make a unique tech that improved the scout cavalry line. The first idea was to increase the melee armor by plus two to make them similar to a knight in Castle Age, but then the Teutons got buffed and the bonus was no longer unique. Now I really wanted to make the scout cavalry line more durable, so I gave them a Sif bonus that you'll see later in the Sif bonuses section. And because the Gales used Hobolars to such an extent that even the English started using them, they really needed a bonus for them. And interestingly, the Hobolar is not really a mere cavalry unit, but it was rather described as a mounted infantry unit because the hobby was a much smaller horse breed than a great horse. This way it was much easier for lightly armored infantry to jump on their small horses. To make a unique technology out of this, I decided for an attack bonus for barracks and stable units against infantry. I then looked at similar bonuses to see what values are fair and what price would be suitable for the technology. First, I looked at the Burmese Sif bonus that increases infantry attack by plus one each age. Now, this is a free bonus, but it only affects two unit lines and therefore it adds up to a total of plus six attack. Then I looked at the similar effect of the Aztecs technology Garland Wars that adds plus four attack to infantry, but it affects four unit lines. So, 4x4, four four, a total of 16 attack. It costs 450 food and 750 gold. The Farimba tech of the Malians increases cavalry attack by plus 5 for 3 unit lines. So, 3 times 5 is a total of 15 attack. The technology costs 650 food and 400 gold. The Chieftain's tech for the Vikings used to cost 400 food and 300 gold, but was changed to 700 food, 500 gold. And it increases the attack bonus of infantry against cavalry by plus five, and against camels by plus four. This is a very specific bonus, similar to our Hobel attack, because it only affects mounted units. It is still a total of 15 attack against cavalry and 12 against camels. With that in mind, we can look at the Hobola technology for the Gales that increases the attack bonus for barracks and stable units, so it is 4 unit lines against infantry by plus 3. So it is 4 times plus 3 attack, which is 12 attack in total. That means the technology has a specific attack bonus and a very low one, which means the cost should be on the cheaper side in the range of 500 food and 350 gold. The second unique tech is inspired by the fact that Galloglass units were hired in other parts of Europe. Therefore, I called the technology Gaelic Warfare and it reduces the gold cost of team unique units. That means it works similarly to the Casper tech of the Berbers or the Paper Money tech of the Vietnamese in a way that it also affects your allies. And because it also affects your Galloglass units, the unit cost changes from 55 food, 35 gold to 55 food and 28 gold. Now I can look at the civilization bonuses. Here I had a lot of ideas as well, but again, the official balance patch used similar approaches for other sieves, so I had to come up with other ideas. For the first bonus, I wanted an economy bonus similar to the Viking civilization because at some point the Vikings and medieval Irish mixed. Therefore, the first bonus makes town center technologies, except age ops, 30% cheaper. 
The next bonus I had in mind was making the Siege Workshop upgrades cost 30% less food, but as you know, this bonus now applies for the Bulgarians with 50% less food. The other bonus I had in mind was increasing the carry capacity of villagers every time you researched an upgrade. So for example, if you researched double bit axe, your lumberjacks would carry plus one wood. After bow saw, they would carry another plus one wood. This would also apply for farmers with farm upgrades and miners with gold and stone mining upgrades. So you would end up with better working villages because they would need to walk less. In a way it is a weaker and staggered version of the Aztec carry capacity bonus. In my mind that sounded pretty cool, but this will be used for the new Sicilian civilization that will be added with the Lords of the West DLC. And this means that I had to come up with other Civ bonuses. So the second one is inspired by the Hobola and it increases the HP of the Scout Cavalry line by plus 5 each age for a total of plus 15 in Imperial Age. This effect is similar to the Franks and Mongols bonus, but it works a bit differently because the bonus comes into effect with each age up and not with each unit upgrade like the Mongols. And you can see the differences in this table. Now the third bonus for the Gales is inspired by the arrival of Christianity to Ireland in the 5th century and the Catholic saint St. Patrick who in general belief introduced Christianity to Ireland. Although other sources state that that isn't entirely true, the medieval Gaels were a religious people and missionaries traveled as far as Iceland to spread their message. Therefore, their monks gain plus one range for better conversions. Here you can see the unique unit and the unique texagon. And for the team bonus, I wanted something simple. And because the Gales usually did cattle raiding in the earlier times, I figured it should be something with herdables. However, the cattle raiding itself is pretty well represented by the Celts bonus though, so the team bonus for the Gales increases the line of sight for herdables by plus one. Now that we know all of the bonuses, we can look at their tech tree. The Gales have a pretty good archery range, lacking only the thumb ring upgrade, Parthian tactics and the hand cannoneer. I wanted them to have good but not too strong archers, so they need to use the other options more. The medieval Irish used a lot of archers and also cavalry archers after they replaced slings and chariots, but they were not known for archers. Then they have a full barracks with the addition of the Hobola upgrade in the castle that increases their attack versus infantry by plus 3. This makes their infantry line pretty good in trash wars against Halberdier. The stable is going to be interesting because the Gales lack the Cavalier upgrade since they didn't use a lot of heavily armored knights but they have full upgrades for their scout cavalry line with the addition of plus 5 HP per age and the plus 3 attack versus infantry with the unique technology. This should reflect the heavy use of hobby horses and not heavily armored war horses. Also, the plus 3 attack against infantry helps the knight line a little bit in the Imperial Age, if you need to go for heavy cavalry. The Siege Workshop is quite good with Siege Ram and Onager, only lacking Heavy Scorpion and Bombard Cannon. They also have access to Siege Engineers. Then they have a full Blacksmith, only lacking the last Archer Armor upgrade, which again makes their Archers and Skirmishes not the best in late game. As you might have guessed, this is done to balance out the other two trash options the Halberdier and the Hobola Hossa that are quite good choices if gold runs out. The dock is about average, but they lack shipwright, heavy demos and elite cannon galleons, so they are not the best in late game water games. The university has the basics, but no architecture and no fortified wall, and also no keep, so they do lack a fair bit of defensive options. However, they have siege engineers and arrow slits for the guard towers if you have to go into tower defense. In the castle, they only lack the sapphis tech, and here you can also see the unique techs again.
The monastery has all you need basically with redemption to convert enemy siege which is going to be easier with the plus one range, then fervor for faster walking monks and sanctity for more HP. You lack block printing though so the range advantage is only useful in castle age or against civilizations that also lack block printing. And last but not least, they do have all the economy upgrades, including guilds. This was the tech tree, and I do think they are quite well balanced, with unique options in all stages of the game. For example, you have a strong drush, because you can scout your opponent a bit faster, since your plus one line of sight sheep help you scouting your starting resources, and loom is 30% cheaper, so you don't need to mine the additional 10 gold for your third militia. Your scout rush is also slightly stronger with the plus 5 HP and they also have access to bloodlines, which gives them the best fully upgraded scouts in late feudal age. In castle age you can make use of your now even beefier light cavalry, do a plus 1 range monk rush or drop a castle and use your very powerful galloglass unique unit that can also help you with unorthodox strategies with the ability to cut trees. In Imperial Age you can use strategies such as Siege Help or even Siege Galloglass against your opponent and supplement your army with Hobolar Hussars. Overall, the Gales are a strong civilization with very good options on Arabia and Arena. Maybe a few tweaks here and there are necessary, but I think they are mostly fine. Things that come to mind for tweaking are economy upgrades, the elite galloglass tech or even bloodlines to balance out their late game power. I have playtested this sylph myself against the AI, but to balance it properly you always need to play against a real opponent. Without a doubt however, the Gale civilization concept provides a very strong 1v1 civ. Let me know in the comments below how you like the Gales and what civilization concept you would like to see next. With that being said, have a good one and keep customizing.